I'm Mike, and today, what kind of miles per gallon do you get on your bike? What? I thought bikes got infinity miles per gallon. Nope, you as the engine of the bike burn calories and therefore have a carbon footprint, which is why it's worth examining what your dietary carbon footprint is. And as you will soon see in some cases, it makes it worse to ride a bike than it does to drive a car. So how do we figure out what your bicycle miles per gallon is? Well, you can start by looking at how many calories you burn per mile on your bicycle, and then look at how much CO2 emissions there are per calorie of your diet. And you wanna see how many calories you're burning on top of your normal metabolism when you're riding a bike. And you can do that by looking at livestrong.com, where it says that biking at a moderate speed, you burn about 53 calories per mile if you weigh 190 pounds, about 43 calories per mile if you weigh 155 pounds, and 36 calories per mile if you're 130 pounds. It is fair to say that the average person going an average speed will burn about 40 calories per mile, and the math is easy that way. Now, for food. It would be really hard to catalog every single thing you ate and the CO2 emissions for those things, so we're gonna just look at diets in their entirety. Here is a study from the UK that looked at the carbon emissions of various diets. As you can see, the average diet that 95% of people eat is more carbon intense than a low meat diet, a vegetarian diet, and twice as carbon intense as a vegan diet. This is because plant-based diets rely mainly on grains for their calorie source, which are a very efficient source in terms of CO2. But when you're inefficiently feeding grain to animals, which according to this Cornell article, averages 28 calories of grain for one calorie of meat, it becomes clear why meat and other animal products have such a high carbon footprint. All right, now let's do some math. If you hate doing math, you can just watch me do math. To illustrate this fact, we are going to compare a normal diet to a vegan diet. As that study from earlier from the UK shows, an average meat diet has 5.6 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per day in emissions, and a vegan diet has 2.89 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per day. And the numbers in the study are based off a 2,000 calorie a day diet. And so take that number and divide it by 2,000. For the normal diet, you have a 2.8 grams of CO2 equivalent per calorie. And for a vegan diet, you have half that, 1.4 grams. You can now input your own calories per mile here, but with the average of 40 calories per mile, we're just gonna use 40. So for the standard diet, we get 112 grams of CO2 equivalent per mile. The vegan diet, we get 52 grams of CO2 equivalent per mile, which for us Americans is translated to 0.25 pounds of CO2 equivalent per mile, and for a vegan, half that. Now we get to convert that into miles per gallon of gasoline, or the equivalent to that. Since a gallon of gasoline has 19.64 pounds of carbon emitted every time it's burnt, all we have to do is divide it by our numbers. And voila, we have our numbers, our miles per gallon equivalent. For a standard diet, it is 78.5 miles per gallon equivalent to ride your bike, or 33 kilometers per liter. For a vegan, it is 157 miles per gallon equivalent, so you can see the huge difference right away. You may notice that a coal-burning electric car like the newest Nissan LEAF, which gets 114 miles per gallon equivalent, is actually better than the average person riding their bike at a moderate speed. Even a Tesla at 89 miles per gallon equivalent is doing better. But the average vegan diet remains more efficient than any electric car on the market. And it gets worse. It is worth noting that if you are as heavy as the average male at around 190 pounds, and you eat a meat-heavy diet as defined in the study, and you're just going a moderate speed, you are gonna get as low as 46.8 miles per gallon. And if you are cycling at a higher speed, you're gonna be all the way down to 43 miles per gallon. At that point, you might as well be driving a hybrid gasoline vehicle, for example, a Prius C gets 53 miles per gallon in the city. Now, I really quickly want to touch on this since I know someone's going to say in the comments, didn't that Carnegie Mellon study just say that vegetarian diets are worse for the environment than meat diets? No, it simply said that if you replace two strips of bacon with 12 to 16 servings of lettuce, that you will have a higher footprint. 
but in reality, they didn't even look at vegetarian diets and they didn't look at real world diets, which we are actually looking at real world diets in this situation from this study. So does this mean that you should just give up on biking for the environment and drive a hybrid everywhere? No, it just means that you should eat plants. It is also worth noting that eating local in general reduces your carbon footprint. However, eating local beef is not that great considering the carbon footprint goes into everything it takes to create the animal and not just how far it was shipped. If you want to transport your body with the least amount of impact on the environment, cycling with a vegan diet is the best way to do that. Unless you are somehow able to take a full bus everywhere that has 60 people on it, in which case you'll get 330 miles per gallon, this is the best way. All right, that's it for today. Eat plants, and if you don't want to miss the next one, feel free to subscribe, and thank you for watching.